Writing paragraphs. A paragraph is a collection of sentences about a single idea. It typically contains a topic sentence, the main idea of the paragraph, as well as supporting sentences, examples or evidence that support the main idea. A paragraph should have unity, meaning that all of the sentences are connected to the main idea, and coherence, meaning that each sentence flows smoothly to the next sentence. When you introduce a new idea, even within the discussion of the same topic, start a new paragraph. As a rule of thumb, a paragraph should have at least three sentences. Although there are certainly exceptions to this rule, they are more often seen in creative writing or when an author is trying to emphasize an important point, for example, by making a single sentence a paragraph. In beginning scholarly writing, you are advised not to break the rules just yet. As you develop greater confidence as an educational researcher and writer, you will begin to determine which rules can and should be broken, and when. An introductory paragraph has the important job of grabbing a reader's attention. It should be interesting, though not cutesy or overly clever, which can be a turnoff. Although introductory paragraphs often start with a topic sentence, an alternative strategy is to place the topic sentence at or near the end of the paragraph with the evidence leading up to the main idea rather than flowing from the main idea. According to Sobronik, Meyer, and Kemper, the authors of Writer's Inc., an introductory paragraph should do the following. Point the way into your essay, spark your reader's interest as well as reveal who you expect your readers to be, commit you to a certain language, and establish a frame or form for your writing. In other words, not only are you introducing a topic and hooking your reader, you are setting the tone for the rest of the essay in terms of level of formality. Conversely, there are a few strategies to avoid in introductory paragraphs. Dr. Connie Michalos, director of the Tutorial Services Center at the University of St. Thomas, discourages obvious statements about a topic, such as, in this essay I am going to discuss, or this paper is about, Dr. Michalos also recommends that writers assume an appropriately authoritative tone rather than appearing tentative by using words like seems, appears, or other apologetic language. For example, this might not be right, but... Furthermore, cliches and overly grandiose language, for example, from the dawn of time, will quickly lose a reader's attention. In the same vein, Stubbs and Barnett authors of The Little Brown Reader, caution against using dictionary definitions, a restatement of the title of the essay, or broad generalizations. All three approaches are simply boring. Instead, they suggest such tactics as incorporating quotations, providing a personal anecdote, highlighting an interesting fact or statistic, asking a provocative question, looking at an opposing viewpoint, and stating that a problem exists. Concluding paragraphs. The purpose of a concluding paragraph is to restate the main points of an essay in different words. However, do not simply paraphrase the introduction and do not introduce new information in the conclusion. Instead, Dr. Michelo suggests the following strategies to create an effective conclusion, particularly for the final sentence. Prediction. Based on the strength of your argument, use may versus will. Warning. Recommendation to action discussion of topics wider significance, or quotation.